How, how much of an influence did he have on you and, and your decision to become a coach? And, and what did you learn from him? And also, your brother coached while you played there at uh, Texas Tech, and then you followed him to East Carolina. How much of a, of a mold did he have on you? And, and uh, how have you kind of tried to put your own stamp on, on your offense compared to your brother's? Yeah, I mean, I guess the first part of your question is is Coach Leach is probably the whole reason why I wanted to coach. You know, I mean, I was just – I was very lucky to be at Texas Tech at that point in time. Um, I've said it before, it was just a period of time where he was very cutting edge with what they were doing and kind of the run they went on at Texas Tech. But I, I think just more than anything, the way that he was an out-of-the-box thinker and did things his way, you know, was, was very appealing to me to kind of see a different style, I guess, you know, a little bit different than the norm. And – that's what piqued my interest there as a as a college student, as a young quarterback. But yeah, I mean, his, his impact is, as we all know, is, is certainly touched the game in a lot of ways. Um, and then moving along to your second part of the question with with Leakin, yeah, I mean, all these stops. I mean, every stop I've been on, uh, you try and take away pieces from from those experiences, right? And I certainly did in the two years that I was with him at, at East Carolina, where we were there together, and. Did some nice things under Coach McNeil, who's been a huge mentor for me. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, specifically with him, of course, I've taken some pieces away from uh, from that experience, but I certainly have from all the other coaches that I've been around too. Eric, Larry Williams with TigerIllustrate.com. Um, can you elaborate on the running game and sort of the evolution of that and what Dabo was saying? It's not your sort of the air raid that, that Coach Leach uh, brought in and sort of the foundation of that and, and the evolution of it. And, from your perspective, the importance you place on not just the conventional running game, but also the quarterback's legs and making that threat as well. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I guess uh, when we went to East Carolina, that's just what we kind of started to develop. And that's as a young coach, I was a GA, was exposed to that and kind of what we were trying to accomplish there. And we just knew you better run the football if you really want to win championships, you know, and if you really want to contend for them consistently you better have the ability to do it and so started to kind of develop that part of of our offense at East Carolina and you know I think for me professionally a huge year um, in my coaching career so far had been at App State you know a place that is known for running the ball and was a totally different background than than mine and that was great for me professionally to be around those guys that had done it so well for so long now and you know, we've certainly been able to, to apply that to, to my philosophy and our philosophy from the run game standpoint. So, yeah, I mean, you look at, at us at TCU, you know, a year ago, that was something we did pretty well and was certainly a huge reason of, of why we had some success there offensively. You went to Wolfpack, Carolina. Um, hi, Garrett. You probably, I'm assuming, had a couple of options. You obviously award-winning performance as a coordinator at TCU making it to the national championship, why Clemson? You said it wasn't like a program you were aspiring to, that you had, you know, worshipped Dabo in any way previously. Well, what was it? I mean that in the <laughs> kindest way, Dabo. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> what, what was it? Why Clemson? What, what attracted you and, and made this the spot to take you from, you know, staying at TCU, let alone going anywhere else? Right. I just think the simple answer is just kind of the total package of, of what could get me away, you know, is, listen, I was very happy there. We had just gotten there. Year one, unbelievable ride, unbelievable season. You know, my family, my wife's family is all from Texas, just all these connections, people we had worked with, loved our colleagues there, loved our players. But it, it had to be something special like this, and I think it's, you know, it, it's the consistency here. It's It's the stability. It's the... You know, the, the balance of life and enjoying it and being happy and being in a small community like this that is very tight knit, um, you know, and then plays the caliber of football that, that we expect Clemson to be playing. So I think just it had to be something that was going to check the box there in all areas. Um, people that know me know, you know, I'm a very thoughtful person and, uh, you know, I'm going to think through things, um, hopefully from all angles. So. Yeah, I mean, it just, the more and more we kind of learned about it and the more we talked and the, the more this just made sense. You have been work with Clemson, all Clemson. Just wanted to get your thoughts on Cade and, and, and just, I know you recruited them out of high school, not what your thoughts now, what you've seen on them on tape and what you can do maybe next year with them. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's the full package. You know, I've known of Cade and known Cade for 
for probably about three years now. Um, you know, recruited him while he was a young pup there at Austin Westlake and the great career he had at the high school level. But yeah, I, I think, he, listen, he's, he's very skilled. He's very talented, but I just think between the years, the way he carries himself, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that, you know, that's kind of the magic with Cade Klubnik, you know. And so I'm very eager and anxious to get to work with him. You know, we've just got off the road and hadn't been able to do a lot with him or see him too much. But I know I know that kid's foaming at the mouth just like the rest of our players. And, and trust me, we as coaches are ready to get going with him too. Here at Matt Conley with all three, I think you said this morning that this offense will be a lot different than – TCU offense really somewhat different. Just how do you kind of believe in adapting to personnel and kind of doing what fits them? Yeah, to, to me, that's the whole deal. You know, I mean, listen, I'm not a coach that has a ton of pride in certain plays, and we're going to run this just because I love it. I mean, we're, we're going to figure out what our guys can do and what we feel like is going to make us the best offense possible, okay, to, to position our team, you know, to win win games. And that, that's my job, and that's our job. So. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be totally adaptive to, you know, what we have, what we can handle, and what we feel like is going to give us the best chance to win. That's it. Yeah, so if I could ask you a question, um, Anna with Clemson 24-7. I think this morning you said plays are plays, but how you get into them can be different. Just can you elaborate on that and yeah. what you saw? Um, I don't remember what the, somebody was asking me a question. Talking about, you know, offense, you know. I mean, obviously, we there's a lot of collaboration. You know, we, we, we got a lot of. Had a lot of success here for for a long time, and there's a lot of good coaches in the room, and, and so you got to get on the same page. I mean, four verticals is four verticals, is what I was meaning. You know, inside zone is inside zone. You know, the counter is the counter, the power is the power, slants are slants. You know, digs are digs, curls are curls, screens are screens. Uh, but how you get to those things, how you procedurally do certain things, cadence, formationing, motions, uh, just verbiage. You know, there, there there's a lot that goes into, you know, we can get on the same page quick as football people uh, because we know, oh, okay, that's the power. You know, we know that's the zone. We know that that is a counter. We know that this is a um, uh, drive concept, a mesh concept, a, uh, you know, bang eight. We, we know these things as football people, but everybody calls things differently. So we've got to collaborate, get on the same page uh, so that we can – you know, uh, shorten the learning curve for everybody involved. Uh, we all have, uh, you know, backgrounds in offense. So, um, you know, starts with Garrett, though, being comfortable with, you know, what what he wants to keep, what he wants to change. You know, there's going to be certain things that, that he's going he's gonna to learn here that's going to help him. And obviously, uh, he's going to bring a whole fresh, um, uh, you know, way of doing certain things where, in, in to, again, procedurally, to get to some of the things that we've done for a long time. Uh, again, football is football. If you, if you break it all down, you'll see a lot of similarities, to be honest with you. But how you do those things and maybe how you game plan those things, how you install those things, how you practice those things, uh, uh, again, your, how you drill those things, your, your cadence, et cetera, et cetera, those things, those things is where you really got to get on the same page and, and collaborate so that you're all um, you know, together there. So. Uh, that'll be his big task coming up over the next month of February, and and really studying, uh, you know. And then you got to learn the personnel too, um, as he said. I mean, you got to. I mean, we got a really good roster, a very talented roster, and and you know, there's been some years where they probably had no tight ends, like right. And we obviously got some pretty elite dudes there. So um, it's it's using your personnel and and uh, you know putting it all together from a from a staff standpoint. So. Uh, that'll be that'll be fun though. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, be a lot of fun to, to you know, uh, learn different things, have a different approach. Again, uh, that's that's what I meant by you know, it's it's not like it's not like we're you know going to the triple option here. Uh, it's, it's it's just again we we all have the same components within the within offense, but um, you know, collaborating and getting on the same page will be the fun part. Paul Strela from, from Rivals, Tyre Illustrated. What, for these two, three weeks, what has recruiting been like for you, especially when some of the guys you're bringing in are more familiar with the facilities than you probably are? Yeah, every time we uh, we go on a tour or do anything like that in this building or meet somebody new, I'm right there with them because I told the recruits, better not ask me where something is. Uh, I'm learning this as we go too. But, no, I mean, just the the amount of people, the amount of staff, the amount of people just around campus that have – 
man, just been awesome, you know, and just so welcoming and not just for me, but some of these recruits as we've had visits and had a junior day the other day and just the amount of people that truly touch this program, it's it's pretty amazing, you know, and it's people that are that are genuine about what they do. You know, I mean, it, like I said, it doesn't take long to, to recognize that. Coach Riley, Amanda Poole with Notch Fox out of Columbia. When you have such success at TCU in just a matter of one year, how do you kind of handle that pressure that Clemson fans might be putting on you to have that same success in just one year here? There's always pressure. I mean, that's just kind of how I look at it. That's that's the job we all signed up for as, as coaches this day and age and certainly at this level. But, yeah, I mean, pressure's pressure. We know it's going to be there. Try not to put any more on yourself. But, yeah, I mean, the expectations um, – I think you put on yourself are always probably a little higher than, than your fan base. That's just how, how we're wired as coaches. Coach Lally, uh, Grayson, <laughs> Tiger, I'm traded. just to jump off of Dabo's comment on the tight ends with the elite group, now with Bringswell being the leading man for that position, what kind of advantages can that present in the passing game, especially for your offense? Yeah, I mean, we, we've I've had I've been lucky to, to be successful in the last several years, really, with, with tight ends. And I think it's going to be kind of a similar situation that way is those guys are mismatched problems, right? I mean, they, there are problems defensively. And, you know, if you can do a lot of things with those guys out of that personnel grouping, then there's just it really opens up what you can do from a tempo standpoint and not having to sub all the time and things of that nature that you can get in and out of pretty easily. So. Yeah, I mean, I think those guys are going to be a, uh, you know, be a big part of what we do for sure in, in the passing game and the.